Hey, this is Ralph. In this uh, kind of uh, short lecture here, I want to talk about different tools that a business might use to get online. So what would it take to get an online business? Now, the page I have up right now, this is REI, and this is really not going to be my focus, but I wanted to, I wanted to give you a couple of extremes. I'm going to probably focus more on a small business. So at REI and many other online businesses, you can browse and search through hundreds of various products and they will have some kind of a shopping cart system built in. And by the way, this is generally going to be for the bigger companies. This is going to be managed right over there at REI. Um, they could outsource this, but it's going to be extremely integrated. So you can read about products. They have cool little zoom in features often and I can add to cart, choose quantity, choose size. And um, and away you go, and it'll build up this this shopping cart, and I can easily see what I have. And if you buy from big online stores like REI or Amazon or even Walmart and stuff like that online, then this is a pretty familiar process. It's a pretty standard set of procedures. Let's look at uh, some other business options, though. By the way, these solutions that they're using here will cost hundreds or thousands of dollars a month just to maintain and manage. But these businesses are going on the on the the system that they are making so many online transactions and they're selling products that they would not have otherwise sold that it's in their best interest to have a presence on the web where they can sell things. So REI certainly has a brick and mortar store. They've got a physical location. Um, to, you know, they got physical locations throughout the country. And you can walk in, you can pick up the products, you can go to a cashier, very traditional, as you refer to as a brick and mortar store, versus an online store. So REI has both, Walmart has both, Amazon is strictly online, okay? And some businesses might choose to be strictly, you know, physical or brick and mortar. Some of them are doing it because it's really, they don't really have a good online alternative. Others are doing it just because they are missing the boat. For instance, a, a car dealership, okay? It's going to be tough to sell cars online for a regular dealership, so they are physical brick and mortar store. They use their websites to attract people to the store. Whereas other businesses, especially small businesses, they could be selling more product. But generally, they don't have a website with a shopping cart because uh, they don't know how to set it up. They don't know what it would cost. It might be too expensive for them and things like that. Let's look at a couple alternatives. Here's a really small business. Cat Goods Incorporated, and they have a product here called the Cat Bin, and I actually own one of these, and I like this purple one here, and basically it makes it tougher for your cat to catch birds, and it also and, you know, makes the cat look pretty silly when they're walking around your backyard with this neoprene bib on. But here's a small business, and they have a limited range of products, okay, very small amount, and but they wanted to be able to sell them online because that's going to be the most cost-effective way for them to sell this. Uh, rent for this kind of store would be just you know, probably overwhelming. And by having an online presence, they've increased dramatically the number of potential customers. I think they're actually based out of Eugene. So, um, but what they've gone is they've, they've gone the PayPal shopping cart system. And PayPal isn't the only one, by the way, but it's certainly a very common thing. So if I'm interested in one of these products, let's see, I'll click here for secure online ordering. And basically, here's their menu of products. They're about 11 bucks or $13, depending. And they have a little add to cart option, okay? Just like we saw in REI, pretty similar. But over here, what it's doing, of course, at REI, if I click on Add to Cart, I stay in the REI website. But over here on this Cat Products, when I click Add to Cart, I'm actually taken over to a PayPal page. So I'm taken to a different service, a different company that manages my shopping cart. Now, it's good for the small business because it's more affordable for them to do this. Of course, it doesn't look as professional, you know, when you leave the site where you're shopping at. You know, you've got this lame little Cat Goods Incorporated sign and stuff like that. So you do have to balance the cost and the uh, professionalism, things like that. But otherwise, it's pretty similar. Um, I have my little shopping cart system. I can change quantities. Looks like I can continue shopping, which should take me back to that website and it didn't do that very well it's back over here and so I can keep kinda of hunting around let me add something else to the cart see if it keeps it up to date 
you probably should with cookies and there we go so it's up to date um, but what we do like about this as a customer we can pay with our credit card or we could pay directly with PayPal funds if we used a PayPal account and of course the business over there over at Cat Goods Incorporated they like it too because now they don't have the responsibility of managing um, people's credit card payments they're basically paying PayPal to do it and PayPal gives a few options let's see if I still have my comparison up yeah so if you had a small business I, I tend to recommend the PayPal route uh, nonprofits are, are good too they have donation options for PayPal but it's not bad and let's just look at a couple of their plans just so we can get a feel for the cost and that's really what I'm gonna want from you I'm not during an exam I'm not gonna ask you to go set up a shopping cart system for a real or fake website or anything like that but I want you to have reasonable understanding of what something costs so if you're setting something up for your own business or if you're advising a client on what it's gonna cost you have that knowledge okay so we see that PayPal has a few options monthly fee and let's see we've got right here our standard no monthly fee and I bet a lot of small businesses go this route and I would probably encourage them to go this route especially if they are gonna have a limited number of transactions per month basically over at cat goods are they selling you know 500 cat bibs a month or are they selling 20 cat bibs per month really not sure but that is certainly going to affect your decision for what kind of PayPal shopping cart plan you pick when you set when you see that zero monthly fee it sounds pretty good right well there's gonna be some cost to this and basically what PayPal will do is they will take a percentage of each transaction now that's not so bad though there's no monthly fee there's no setup cost for this by the way and basically when anybody buys your thing I want to say it's 2.9 percent but we'll see if we can't verify that on here then uh, PayPal is gonna get a percentage cut of every transaction now they also have their pro plan which just charge a thirty dollar monthly fee and by the way thirty dollar monthly fee is pretty common fee amount for basic shopping cart systems so kinda of keep that number in mind thirty bucks a month so we have these two plans and I know I'm ignoring this one in the middle here we've got the zero dollars a month they'll charge a bigger percentage for thirty dollars a month they might give you a few more features a couple more down here except credit cards via phone and fax that's that could be pretty nice with virtual terminal so if somebody called you up you could actually take their credit card over the phone and design and host your own checkout pages for full control so you remember what I was saying before about how REI looked more professional because when you added to the cart it you were still in their site well PayPal will help you out with that basically if you pay the bigger monthly fee they will let you customize the look of your checkout pages and what you could do is um, basically you can have that checkout page be part of your site so it's much more professional it's more ingrained look see I'm just a little more serious but it's still it's all gonna come down to transactions ah here we go more info merchant fees let's see what we have down here so we can get these costs organized for ourselves so this looks like the basic plan um, let's make sure we're looking at payment standard oh, I want to go back to that here we go I'd like to see, I just want to see if I can get all three nope I want to see if I can get the pricing for all three at once and it looks like all of them are going to charge us I would expect the thirty dollar a month to have a cheaper rate but basically I'll oh, discounted rate available so I'll click on that in just a second so but here's the basic plan so for each transaction they're gonna charge 2.9 percent of the transaction plus 30 cents per transaction so this is something the business owner would have to keep in mind let me pop open a calculator real quick so if we had basically a thousand dollars of product that we were selling on a monthly basis multiply that by 0 0.029 of course we should get 29 bucks we're getting close to thirty dollars by the way there are some shopping cart systems where you pay a monthly fee but you don't necessarily have to pay a transaction fee certainly not this high so this is something that's yeah, it, this could be reasonable though if you're only selling several hundred dollars worth of product a month or less then not a bad way to go because then you don't have that monthly cost looming over you so and let's look at some discounted rates um,
I'm having a little problem getting all the details here. View all discounts. Here we go. So there are some volume discounts, it looks like. Selling 3,000 to 10,000 worth of product, they do lower that transaction fee. But still, this could be pretty costly. This is probably one of the reasons you don't see PayPal being used for these really big businesses. But for small business, I think they're worth considering. So let's just keep that in mind. Between zero and $30 per month, and approximately 3% per transaction, with of course this little flat fee thrown in. Now I've also got another shopping cart solution, um, Shopify here, and this one's pretty big, pretty well known, and a lot of small and medium sized businesses might be going this route also. They've got free trial options, let me jump right over to pricing, and now we see, wow, they've got quite a difference here. Try Shopify for 14 days for free without a credit card, that's nice, you can actually give it a little dry run, you don't have to feel obligated to put in a credit card to test it out. And they've got a $30 a month plan, basically 29 bucks a month, $60 a month, $180 a month. And free setup, use your own domain, which is kind of nice because if you've got yourbusinesssite.com, it looks more professional if your shopping cart is also at yourbusinesssite.com. And they have a much smaller transaction. Notice this is only good for about 100 products. I'm sure you could sell more than 100 products, but they'll probably charge a slightly different rate or something. One gigabyte of file storage. Now, what do you need that file storage? Well, basically, you're going to be storing some stuff on their servers. Basically, you're probably your product catalog and things like that. And they charge a 2% transaction fee. Remember, uh, uh, PayPal was like 2.9%. So, but that is limited to 100. Well, by the way, I think I misspoke there. This isn't 100 products per month. This is 100 products in your catalog. So this would be perfectly fine for the... Um, for the cat goods incorporated you know selling you know what they had they had like what 10 varieties of the pretty much the same product so that would be fine there so this is not 100 transactions per month it's literally 100 products in their menu their catalog of products that people can buy and of course they have some slightly bigger plans which allow you to have a library of 2500 products and notice only a 1% transaction fee per transaction and then, you, of course, you can go to the big one here, $180 a month, no transaction fee whatsoever, discount codes, which means you can provide cu customer coupon codes and things like that, free shipping or 20% off, whatever. So you get a lot of options. But, of course, it's a huge change in price. We've gone from 30 bucks to $180. So it would really be up to the business owner to figure out what's going to be the most realistic. And, of course, you can change. You can start off with cheap and go more expensive later on. But it's all really going to come down to how many products do you need to sell per month? How much money do you have to make per month to make the bigger, more expensive plan actually the smartest decision? And of course, you guys all have Excel skills. You could easily come up with an Excel spreadsheet which allowed you to experiment, do what if scenarios. What if I sold you know this many products at an average price and stuff like that? You could start to figure out how many how much money would I have to sell or how much product would I have to sell each month for the perfect the $60 a month plan to be the way to go but that's just a little bit about shopping carts so of course we got our big companies they're all internal extremely expensive you know hundreds of dollars per month and it could be thousands of dollars a month to maintain and of course they will be processing generally their own credit card payments they've got deals with the banks to to manage that stuff the smaller business might use PayPal Okay, especially if they're only making you know fewer than 50 or 100 transactions per month. Maybe some months they don't make any transactions, but basically they only pay per transaction. And of course, then we can go to a slightly more professional, but still a very basic plan, where you maintain a larger catalog, you know, 100 products, 2,500 products, and your transaction costs go down because you are paying a set monthly fee. So that's a little bit about shopping carts on the web, and it's something that most businesses would take care of, especially if they have a physical product. Clearly, if it's a, uh, you know, it's a uh, massage or some other kind of service, house cleaning, then you're not going to really have online transactions that way. 
So that's the basic cost of shopping cart system. Now, how does a business get online? Let me go back to this cat bib place here. So Cat Goods Incorporated, you know, clearly small business, you know, and not a huge menu of content and stuff like that. And they got cute pictures of cats wearing bibs. So how do they get online? Let me go back to their main biz, main site here, catgoods.com. So basically, I'm just looking at their domain name. So they acquired a domain name. And you've got a little bit of exposure to this um, the other week of looking up a domain name, namecheap.com. I think that's, that's a pretty, I haven't used them yet, but they've got a pretty good reputation, I guess, for getting domain names. So let's say you've got a business. You need to get a domain name. And this is going to cost you Let's go ahead and say a minimum of 10 bucks per year for a domain name. You can get one domain name, and let's see, I know they've got some specials here. That's pretty good, $3.98 a year. That's not a normal price. That's probably some kind of special promo price, so we'd have to read the fine print to make sure. But um, otherwise, yeah, we would start to do something like that. Now, you've seen ads, too, for GoDaddy. They're certainly a popular domain name registrar. So any of these will be fine, but it's still, even though they've got some promo prices, just go ahead and expect about 10 bucks per year per domain name. But then you have to, of course, find the domain name, and that is not as easy as it might think. Depending on how unique sounding your business is, then you really have to make sure that you get this domain name early rather than later. Even if you don't have a business now, but you have reasonable expectations, you might start a business in the next two to three years, I would probably give serious thought to getting your domain name sooner rather than later. You know, get it, you know, in the next month or two. It's not a huge expense and you can just kind of sit on it and later on you can develop the site or not, you know, but at least you've, you'll have it. So let's say, um, got a website and want to, I want a clean saltwater aquarium, so your aquarium cleaning business, okay? And I don't have a name for my business yet since I just made it up, but how about if it's Aquarium Cleaners of Oregon? So what if I just did a search for AquariumCleaners.com? That sounds pretty good. It'd be pretty impressive if this is even available, but let's see what happens. Do a quick little search here, hopefully. And the .com is not available. It's already registered, but there's a ch but there are choices. And these aren't choices I would necessarily recommend, though. I am of the belief that if you can't get the .com, I wouldn't get the .org or the .net. Um, it would be too easy for a competitor. You know, you just lose traffic. You know, if your business is AquariumCleaners.net, it'll be too easy for possible customers to go to your main competition aquariumcleaners.com and you don't want to do that you want to get a name that's different and the reason I was saying the minimum of 10 bucks a, uh, a year is because I I would never really recommend just getting one domain I'd also suggest getting variations of that domain so that way you can you can snap up whoever has the dot com should also go ahead and get the dot net um, at, at the very least, maybe even the dot .info. There's a ton of them. You're not going to spend money to get them all, but you want to get the most common sounding. Um, in fact, they got a special on dot .info, only three bucks a year for maybe probably just for the first year, but still. So clearly, Aquarium Cleaners is not going to be a good domain name for me. Now, if it is a business and I'm pretty limited to my area, maybe I can specify something like... Um, Aquarium Cleaners Oregon. Ah, see now we're getting a little bit more specific. My domain name is getting a little bit long, okay, but I think it's probably still acceptable and it would just have to be something that I'd have to think about. Oh, is this really what I want? Um, the dot com is available and looks like they've got uh, 11 bucks or so a year and there could be some coupon codes that I could use, but now we're starting to get the idea, all right, I guess I could get Aquarium Cleaners Oregon. Or maybe if it was, maybe I could consider Central Oregon, but now we're getting super long. So just something to keep in mind. Those domain names are still out there, but you sometimes have to be creative with the names you get. But of course, you want your name to be easily read, 
easily typed by people. You don't want to get misspellings. Or if you do think people could misspell your name, you can actually buy the misspelled version. And there are businesses that do that. Check this out. If I go to Amazon, try to catch this. You can see I misspelled Amazon. I just put in amzon.com and I'm going to do a press enter it forwards me over to Amazon spelled correctly. So the people over at Amazon, they acquired, they purchased the misspelled version of their name and they're doing that so that competition can't get it. Okay, And they're also doing it because maybe they learned that people regularly leave the A out. You know, you're typing fast and that's something they do. So they purchased the misspelled version of their name and that's something that you should consider. Uh, by the way, just for professionalism, I think everybody in here, whether you're going to have a website or not, you should get your own domain name. Ideally, something that incorporates your own name because then you can get email addresses associated with it. You don't even have to plan to make a website to get your own name. But, you know, if, if my name was... Uh, Pete Simpson. I already have Ralph Phillips, so I'll do a search for Pete Simpson. Pete Simpson's a pretty plain name, but shit, it's oh, sorry, it's available. Who knew? Um, oh wait, 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 wait. No, it's not. Well, it's kind of available. I gotta, I gotta read everything here. Pete Simpson is already owned by somebody, but they're offering to sell it. Okay, so they're selling it as a premium for like uh, over a grand. So that's no good. <laughs> I don't want to pay a thousand dollars for PeteSimpson.com. That's a pretty common name. Hopefully you have a unique name and you're able to get your domain pretty affordably. Otherwise you have to experiment with throwing in a middle initial or something like that or doing some variation. But it's it's neat, it's professional. You know, it, it'll cost you ten bucks a year to maintain, and then you can start to make email addresses like whatever, you know, at yourname.com. So something to keep in mind. Now getting a domain name is obviously a very minimal cost but it's not actually getting a website to get an actual website you need web hosting web hosting and a domain name are two separate tasks now those two separate tasks are sometimes taken care of by the same company for instance GoDaddy their main business is domain name registrar you get your domain name from them but they also do website hosting Okay, so there are a lot of businesses that do both. There are some businesses that are get it dedicated just to domain names, and there are some businesses dedicated to web hosts. You do not need to get your web hosting from the same business that you got your domain name from. GoDaddy and Namecheap, for instance, they might rank pretty well for domain name registrars, but they tend not to rank really well for web hosting. So for web hosting, let's see, I'm going to head over to... Uh, Bluehost.com, they come up a lot in the top 10 list. So, Bluehost web hosting. And let's kind of see, do we have a nice, eh, they got the basic prices right here. Sometimes you can find a nice little price list. Features, let's go to features and see what kind of stuff they have. Why choose Bluehost? Here, here's what I was looking for. So you got unlimited disk storage. Hey, look, they include a free domain name too. So some web hosts will also do domain name registrar registrations now. So that's something to keep in mind. So at least one of your domain names will be free for the first year included if you get hosting. Um, of course, you can make unlimited email accounts and things like that. Those are pretty nice. Um, email forwarding is unlimited, basically, so you can make anything at yourname.com, you know. Add-on domains, subdomains, park domains. I know this doesn't really make a lot of sense to you, and that's okay, but if you were to look at 10 different web hosting services, you would see pretty much the same list of features. They all pretty much offer the same basic thing, um, and they're all pretty much at the same basic price. But instead of 10 bucks a year for the domain name, hosting starts to get in the neighborhood of $100 per year. Okay, 100 to $120 per year for generally a basic plan. And of course, they'll have other plans too. So you don't have to worry too much about all the options in here. It is a big laundry list of things to do. And if you if you are looking at doing something like this a little bit more seriously, you know, maybe after the term is, is over, I would encourage you to come talk to me individually and I can kind of explain some of this, uh, what's the good, what's the unimportant, that kind of stuff. 
and I can kind of give you a little bit more one-on-one -on -one advice on what's the way to go. But for now, for this class, I want you to keep track of all these costs for these various things. Of course, we have our shopping cart system. How much do those cost? We have our domain name registration. How much does that cost? We have our web hosting system. Now, of course, they've got promo prices. I don't want you to be thrown off by these promo prices of like five bucks a month. Typically, they're in the $10 a month range. So you might start taking some notes. Um, domain names, about 10 bucks a year. Web hosting, about $10 a month. Okay, And basically, web hosting will give you access to a web server so that your business can be stored online. REI uses a web host. They have a web server that holds all of their databases and all of their website pages. So, And of course the, the CatBib company, Cat Goods Incorporated, they've got a web host too. Now of course REI has, has big requirements. They have big requirements in that they have a lot of content. They have a big database. They have lots of web pages. And they also have thousands of people accessing those web pages. So REI is not using a $10 a month solution for their business. Their solution probably costs hundreds of dollars per month for web hosting. But a small business like Cat Goods Incorporated, they are very likely using a $10 a month solution certainly not more than 30 bucks a month. Let's go back to that web hosting plan. So, and let's see, that's their basic web hosting plan. I'm going to head home real quick. I'm going to click sign up now. They're probably going to have some upgraded versions too. I was hoping to see if they had a like a pro version and stuff like that. A lot of these web hosting companies, they'll give you a basic plan for 10 bucks a month and then they might offer a like a business business setup, you know. Let's see. I'm gonna check out Fat Cow, which is another web hosting option. And yep, they've got promo prices, you know, starting cheap here and stuff like that. Hosting features. Let's look at this real quick. Okay, here's a list of their features. It's probably almost identical to the other one. I know this one. They got a full features list and stuff like that. Um, special introductory rates full features list. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and take my word for it. I don't want to spend a lot of time hunting around. But um, basically these hosting companies will generally have multiple plans and they'll have often a more expensive one that includes a shopping cart system. So sometimes they'll integrate the shopping cart system with the web hosting plan for businesses. And then they usually start to get in the $30 a month uh, range there. So that's web hosting. So you've got the cost for web hosting, you've got the cost for the domain name, you've got the cost for the shopping cart system. Well, then you got to build a website, okay? So to build a website, you have to either know how to make a website yourself or you have to pay someone else to do it for you. And there's certainly plenty of people around that are willing to do that and you can get a fancy website or you can get a simple website. But either way, that does cost money. It's tough to give you a price on this, so I don't want you to worry too much about this one because getting a website, you know, a super basic website that uses a PayPal shopping cart system, that could be maybe three to four hundred bucks. You know, when I say a small website, I'm talking maybe five, five web pages, you know, a products page, a contact page, you know, basically an about us page, a location page, you know, just, a, you know, a few basic web pages with some pictures and some text. You list the products, you do that, you know, click add to cart using a PayPal system, you know, might just be a few hundred bucks. Uh, it, it could take a, you know, a good web developer probably, you know, just a couple days to make something like that, assuming you've got the pictures and all that kind of stuff. And then sites could start to become a little bit more expensive. Um, even that that cat bib site they had quite a few pages they had a pretty fancy little navigation menu I wouldn't call it a big website there but it certainly had more than about five pages maybe it had a dozen or 15 pages now we're talking a site that could be in the five hundred dollars to a thousand dollar range you know maybe maybe as much as twelve hundred bucks and of course REI they've got a team of people they've got employees that work on their site and they pay them salaries you know but it could be they could be paying salaries of you know 40, 50, 60 grand a year to at least half a dozen different people in order to maintain their website. So they're paying a lot of money for that. We're, you know, we're talking a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, and I, I bet that's a safe minimum. 
um, there's very likely more than half a dozen people. There could be 10 or more people that work full time at managing the REI website. So a lot of stuff to consider and there's a huge price range depending on how far you go. Um, here, let's check out something super simple. Uh, good old cup of yo. I use their website a lot because it's simple to look at. Here's an example of a super small, simple web page. Probably doesn't cost more than $500 to make something like this. Um, they don't have a lot of fancy. There's nothing, you know, you don't, you're not like you're going to order yogurt through your computer, although that would be pretty friggin' awesome. Um, it's you know pretty simple. It does link over to a blog that somebody else maintains, but notice it's just it just jumps over. It's a it's a different look. So they do have a blog, and but otherwise it's what we generally refer to as a static website. So you pretty much make it and you kind of put it on the back burner. They're not updating this website on a daily basis, even though they should be updating their blog on a daily basis. So that's not too fancy, and they got a few cool looking graphics and the content, and that just stays pretty much the same. So um, that would be a pretty simple, basic, small business website. Under a thousand bucks to make something like that, certainly, probably more like around $500, I would guess. All right, so tons of website options there. So the business has to, of course, get a domain name, get web hosting, get a shopping cart if they're going to sell products online, but then they also have to have someone or make this website. They got to learn how to make a website. Now, how does a business make money from their website? How does Cupio make money from their website? Well, some businesses like Cupio and car dealerships and mattress companies perhaps they they use their websites to direct traffic to their brick and mortar stores. Cupio makes money by selling people yogurt to physically walk into their store. So they need to attract us to their store. I think they could make it a little better for us. They do mention some locations down here, very, very lower portion of their webpage. If I was them, I'd probably shorten this graphic up and I'd feature each, you know, they have like three locations, right? Right? Uh, Westside, Eastside, Sisters. Yeah, they've got three locations. I'd make those three locations big and prominent right down here. And I'd have their hours and maybe a little, a little scaled down version of their map right there. So as soon as you go to the Cup of Yo website, you know exactly where those businesses are and perhaps you know what their flavors are. Right now, I have to go to flavors and find out. Oh, here we go. So something like this. I'd like to see something like this on the home page of the site. But once again, Cupio is just attracting people into their stores, and they're using their website as an avenue to do that. The Catbib site, they are trying to sell product on their on their website. They don't actually um, have a physical store, I'm sure, so they just sell their product that way online. So we have that. Now there's other options too. Businesses can sell with advertising. Let's go to a blog that I like a lot. This is a web designer's blog, smashingmagazine.com. Pretty good stuff. And uh, they make money with advertisements. Okay, So this is an online business. It's an online magazine. Still a business. They're not selling a product. They're not selling a service, but they do want to make money. They're making money by providing good content on their page that gets people coming back. And then, of course, they have advertisements. And these businesses will pay the website money for every thousand times an ad displays. You know, it could be small, though. It could, we're talking like 20 cents for every thousand times this ad shows up. And they could be getting more money if somebody clicks on an ad and stuff like that. So that's advertisement. And a lot of businesses make money this way by having advertisements on their web page. Now, something that Smashing isn't doing very well, though, is generally uh, market research has been showing that these kinds of graphical ads really are not as popular as they used to be and very few people actually click on them. Generally the better thing to do is to incorporate an advertisement right into the content of the page. Um, you know usually with like a product review or testimonial or something like that. So they do have advertisements throughout and you, options to advertise with them but you know a lot of people most people don't even click on these kinds of things. So that's something to keep in mind state of responsive web design. This would be a good article for the web dev class. I have to make a note of that. So um, let's check out another site here. 
got to spell it right sectionhiker.com. Um, I like this blog and I use it as an example because I like the way the site owner incorporates uh, advertisements into his blog. Now he's got some very obvious ones over here but notice there's no big flashy pictures. It's simply gear discounts, Camp Saver, REI, backcountry.com. These are advertisements. Now this particular website owner is using affiliate advertising. So if I mouse over these, and you may not notice this, but in the lower left corner of my web browser screen, I can see where this link is going to go. And you'll notice that it's not going to Camp Saver, it's going to Avant Link. And when I go to REI, it's going to Avant Link. And when I go to backcountry.com, it's going to Avant Link. So what happens is basically Avant Link is an affiliate, is an affiliate advertising company and I can click on this REI link and it will take me to REI by the way but I I did a little roundabout trip okay let me head back for a quick second what happens is if somebody goes to sectionhiker.com section, section and then they click on this REI ad and they go to REI and they buy a product the guy over at section hiker he's gonna get a percentage of that money He's using Avant Link to manage affiliate advertising. So basically, a business owner, a site owner, by the way, you do this after your website is established and has content. Don't do it early on. But you, you sign up with them, and they will have a list of a bunch of merchants. Actually, I want to find, let's see. Let me head over to Affiliate, Tool Center, Merchant Ads. That might be pretty good. I was hoping just to get a kind of a general list of the merchants that you can advertise. So if you wanted to have an REI advertisement on your page, you wouldn't go to REI. You would go to a business, an affiliate uh, advertiser like um, AvantLink to do so. And many of them will give you a list of the common kinds of uh, businesses you can advertise. And I'm not finding it at the moment. But basically, you would set up your account here, okay? And then you could start putting advertisements on your website. Let me jump on back to Section Hiker. And these are text ads. People might be a little bit more inclined to click on these, but even these aren't necessarily the best ones. It's also good to use ads right in the content. Let me check out another blog real quick runblogger.com. I like this guy. Um, writes a lot of good articles about running shoes, product reviews, and stuff like that. And obviously we see some very obvious advertising over here. Um, very very graphical ads. Here's a mini review roundup. Run guard, anti-chaff, uh, uh, energy bit, sports. Okay, I'm going to click on read more. And I haven't looked at this yet, so I'm wondering if there's actually going to be an ad in there. And I, I'm betting there is. Let's see. Yeah, we do have a link down here to runguards.com and available for sale at Amazon. Ah, this brings me to a good point here. I think the uh, Amazon has an affiliate program, by the way. Uh, there's, by the way, a big ad for GoDaddy over there. So lots of advertising. Uh, what I like about this is this guy was writing uh, not too long ago. He's a uh, community college uh, teacher, kind of like me, different field, I think, biology. Um, but uh, I think he's finally getting to the point to where he's making enough money from the advertising revenue of this website that he's considering quitting his job and doing this full time. And I love hearing stories like that about people who are making enough money from hobby turned business and uh, are able to spend full time on their their hobby job, which I think is just the coolest thing ever. So. They do have this link over here available for sale at Amazon, RunGuard. So if I click on this link, and I know this is going to be tough for you to see. I'm kind of looking at, um, you can't see the whole address down here at the bottom. I think part of it's been blocked off. I'm looking for a reference to the RunBlogger website. I don't see it, but I'm willing to bet this is an affiliate ad. When I click on this, I am going to be taken over to... Um, I'm sure enough, there's a little link code reference right in there. So it doesn't actually have the name. It has a link code. So I'm taken right over to Amazon. So perfectly normal. There's the Amazon. There's the product. I can click and I can buy it. But if I buy this product after following that hyperlink, then RunBlogger is going to get a percentage of the money. So 
I think the Amazon.com is pretty nice. It's uh, Amazon.com Associates, basically, and they have a separate link. But if we just did a quick little search up here, Amazon Associates. Here we go, Amazon.com Associates, the web's most popular and successful affiliate program. And um, so basically you can sign up for this and it's pretty easy then to create ads for your website. I'll probably have you guys try this out um, in this last week is just as a little participation activity and incorporate some advertisements on your uh, on the blogs your uh, mock-up blogs that you were making the other day but I think this is a good way to start earn up to 10 percent advertising fees with a trusted e-commerce leader yeah, of course up to so don't get too excited there it could be three percent or four percent or something like that but if somebody buys the product that you directly recommended like that run guard or some running shoe then the person ends up paying the same normal Amazon price but now the site owner gets a cut of that so that's affiliate advertising and super popular way to make some money with blogs of course this it's obviously don't expect this to be super easy the reason this person is making enough money from advertisement revenue so that they can potentially quit their job is because they are putting out a lot of content they've got lots of content that's interesting to people so a lot of people come and read this blog and see those ads and potentially click on those ads so you still have to put out a lot of good content to get people coming to your site so that you can make money off of it okay so it's just another way for an online business to make money and don't kid yourself this is an online business um, someone who puts out regular content it's providing a service you know contents like it's like owning a magazine so to speak you know their businesses newspapers their businesses magazines well now the business is blogging they're, they're writing or hiring writers to make good original content get people coming to the store so to speak and their source of revenue though is selling advertising um, and that's how Google makes money, right? Google makes their money from advertising. Obviously, now they're making some other things, but advertising is still the biggest portion of their revenue. So getting an online business, there's various little things you've got to do. Um, the costs, some costs are known, obviously, for like domain names. And some costs can vary widely depending on do you have the ability to make a website or not. But this is this is in a nutshell how businesses get online they get a domain name they get web hosting they make a website they start putting out content and then advertising or or in addition to they start selling a product and if they're selling a product online then they need some kind of a shopping cart system it could be a little affordable shopping cart system or it could be a big fancy expensive shopping cart system but either way those that's how businesses make money online and if you're thinking of starting up a small business I would I would certainly look at other businesses in your area okay so find other websites for businesses that you think are similar to yours and see how they're putting their content out there how are they getting their product advertised are they selling it online what are they doing that you think is smart what are they what are they doing that that you think is not smart and do the good stuff don't do the bad stuff and keep working on it so check this stuff out go to those shopping cart systems go to those domain registrars just play around get used to what the pricing cost might be how much would it cost for you to set up this business um, and then I would encourage you let me go back over to oops I misspelled that <clears throat> excuse me let me head back There we go. And check out Amazon's affiliate program. I think this is probably a good first one to start with. Um, they're generally pretty good. You don't actually have to have a complete website ready and rocking. If you go to one of those affiliate programs, don't do that until your site is, has content, is published, is looking good, and stuff like that. Because in those affiliate programs, people will actually go to your website and see if it's ready. Um, Amazon does it pretty automated, so you can start to experiment with it pretty quickly. So that would be a good one to start for affiliate advertising. Otherwise, Think about a business you might want to do over the next few years and ask yourself seriously what steps you can take now to get that business online. Have fun.